Hey, Mark Vinciguer, Vinciguer Custom Shop Guitars. Listen, I've um, been working with the CNC trying to get everything uh, through the learning curve, as it were. Doing inlays and all the small stuff. It's hard enough to do the big stuff, but when you're dealing with a, uh, a router spindle versus a high precision um, spindle, things get a little weird when you get down to the um, less than an eighth of an inch down to. Um, well, he's got. Uh, there are bits down to twelve thousandths for cutting pearl and stuff, and if you don't have the right spindle for it, you're just going to break them. So anyway, I had a lot of problems getting getting ramped up. Got a hold of Ron Reed at PreciseBits.com. This company is called Think and Tinker, and um, nice guy. This guy's. Um, He's all about machining. He he builds the precision end mills that are tiny. He builds you know some regular size end mills too. But everything he's given me that's eighth inch man is amazing. I've got some that are um, that are thirty one thousandths, uh, which is like um, three thirty seconds I think. That uh, are three flute that are amazing. I don't know how you get three flutes with a fishtail. Uh, end, but anyway, um, check out his site, precisionbits.com. Now he's helped me a bunch. Uh, let me let me get this. Hang on, let me get this thing up here, and let's see if I can't just bring it in to what I'm talking about. Well, first of all, here's just so that you know where you're going here. Precise, precisebits.com. He's your guy. This is one of the things I printed out off the web page on how to check your uh, spindle run out which when I was buying all these, now the, the bits are not cheap when you get these small ones um, I was actually using a half inch collet in my router, this is a DeWalt uh, 616 or something like that I'll, I'll show you the head on it so you know which one it is on a K2 CNC router um, Basically, I was using the half inch spindle with one of these guys. It's a half inch brass slug with a so called precision milled eighth inch slot with an Allen wrench on the side. You know, I'm thinking, hey, what could be more precision than a precision piece like that? Well, when I checked out Ron's site and measured my total run out on the eighth inch tool, I was getting. Um, man, it was it was incredible. I think it was like six. Well, I wrote it down here. I was getting uh, almost seven thousandths, which is crazy because you know, according to Ron, and well, I'm sure there's some industry standard. You can't have over ten percent run out of the size of your tool. And when you're dealing with a tool, you know, that's a sixteenth of an inch you know you, you gotta have pretty good run out anyway long story way short I'm sorry I'm getting so chatty but I'm really really excited about this piece this is the collet up here everything that you see below here is a precision collet that Ron makes um, that has an ER16 collet assembly on the bottom and this is one of his 8th inch uh, engravers here I went from a hideous amount of run out. Now he actually had me um, take out the, this little brass thing and put in a nice chunky half inch tool that I would use in this collet to measure the run out of the router because that's obviously where you have to start. And I was getting seven tenths of one thousandths so that's an extra decimal place decimal zero 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 seven or seven and a half, something like that. So it was less than one thousandths, you know, which is pretty good for a handheld router, which is in essence what this is. Um, basically, with his collet assembly right here and an eighth inch, I've got one of his precision collets in there that's that goes to two tenths, um, which is awesome. But I was able to get my run out on this particular bit in the setup that you're looking at right here to um, five tenths so that's a half of a thousandth so I was real real excited about what I gained from that um, for this precision work when you're you know when you're cutting tools and you're paying 20 bucks a 
uh, end mill or 17 bucks or whatever they are, you know, breaking them is definitely not a not a career path that you want to go down. Um, so anyway, I'm really excited about that. But one other thing that I'm really excited about, and kind of the reason why I'm making this video, was obviously to share Ron with you and and this ER16 college setup. Um, this guy won't go to a full half inch, but you can get collets for it all the way up to, um, well, just shy of a half inch. I'm not sure. It's kind of an odd size where it stops, but with the problem with these kind of router, CNC router setups, um, is you can't have your tooling pre-indexed and have offsets in your computer. You have to use, like I think you can see my little... You know, I'm using one of these automatic helios here that the tool comes down and actually will re-zero itself, but it's not its not easy to use and you definitely don't want to use it with anything small like that. So I've been looking for a system that I can actually have my tooling in collets, have the offsets pre-measured and in the software so that I can simply change a tool where the router stops and push go. Know exactly where it is so the offset in this program. If you're CNC guys, um, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, I'm sure we've already lost you off of this video and you're gone, but thanks for viewing anyway. But anyway, that's that's what I am looking to do. Um, sorry about that. I had somebody walk, walk in on me. Um, and they thought I was talking to myself. It was kind of comical actually. But anyway, um, these little guys run about, I think they're 69 bucks for for the um, actual collet and the nut. Uh, the first one you buy, you get the wrenches and all that stuff. It's like 89 bucks or something. But once you have the wrenches, um, then you can just buy a, an actual collet assembly. But it doesn't include a collet. Now his collets are go down to two tenths. Um, which is extremely precision. I bought one for the 8 inch ones, um, but he recommended buying the regular $15 uh, collets from Meritool, you know, for anything above the 8 inch. Now he's got this little ring. I buy all of his, um, all of his tooling actually has that, that ring on it, um, which is pre indexed. I don't remember the measurement right now. Boy, you can't see that at all, can you? But anyway, you see the green ring on there. He's got a an actual dimension so that you know when you chuck one of them little babies in there, it's exactly uh, the same same tool length on each one. So if you zero it once, you can run through a whole gamut of these. So I only got one for the for the eighth inch tool holders because they all have the rings. And I think seven sixteenths is as big as you can go here. So I might change my tooling. And end up buying, you know, four of these, and having having my tools preset, so that I can just swap back and forth through them. But anyway, I just wanted to introduce you to PreciseBits.com. If you're doing any small precision CNC stuff for guitars or inlays or anything like that, um, Ron is a huge, huge help. And there's a lot of resources on there that that deal with inlay and luthery and and speeds and feeds on cutting shell is very hard to come by and he's got some stuff on there so go visit precisebits.com i'm a huge fan and become fast friends with ron so we'll see y'all later this is mark with the vince Gare custom shop signing off hey guys one more thing listen i did um after i got this spindle installed um i wanted to show you the difference this is actually the same bit with the old brass insert. I don't know if I can get a little closer. I'm going to try. If you can sneak up on it. Oh, see? Okay. So you can see, you know, it's reasonable until you look at the other one. Actually, um, this is the one that I used when I did Brent Anthony's um, truss rod cover. You can see there's my fingernail. My nail that needs to be clipped to show you the scale. And that hole is where I screwed down the uh, truss rod cover over top of that and redid it on the actual truss rod cover. And I had to back off the depth just a little bit because that was looked really sloppy to me. 
now this one let me pan up and try to keep the focus if I can this one I just did I didn't back off anything this is full depth and man it's gorgeous so there is a huge huge difference with the run out um, come on focus baby but anyway so that's my story and I'm sticking with it call Ron see ya peace out